Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how crude oil is formed. You should then be able to describe what's meant by a hydrocarbon and an alkane. And finally you should be able to use the structural formula for alkanes. I'm showing you here four different products. We've got plastics, petrol, pharmaceuticals and cosmetics. All of these are produced from crude oil and that's what we're looking at in this video. We're going to start by looking at how crude oil is formed. Now we find crude oil in rocks and crude oil is a finite resource. That means that if we continue using it crude oil will one day run out. Crude oil is formed over millions of years from the remains of tiny sea creatures called plankton which were buried in mud. And I'm showing you a picture of plankton here. In this video we're going to look at the molecules that we find in crude oil. Now crude oil is a mixture of molecules called hydrocarbons. I'm showing you here one of the hydrocarbons in crude oil. This hydrocarbon is called methane and it has the formula CH4. We can see that methane contains one carbon atom covalently bonded to four hydrogen atoms. The covalent bonds are shown by these lines between the atoms. As we said methane is a hydrocarbon and I'm showing you the definition of a hydrocarbon here. It's really important that you learn this definition. Hydrocarbons are molecules made up of hydrogen and carbon atoms only. This shows the molecule ethane, which is another hydrocarbon found in crude oil. Scientists call hydrocarbons like methane and ethane alkanes. We're going to take a closer look at alkanes now. This can look a bit tricky, but please stick with it and you will get it. The key feature of alkanes is that they have the general formula CnH2n plus 2. What this means is that if we know the number of carbon atoms in the alkane, in other words n, then we can calculate the number of hydrogen atoms. And to do that we multiply the number of carbon atoms by 2 and then we add 2. Going back to methane, we can see that methane has one carbon atom. So in this case n equals 1. To work out the number of hydrogen atoms, we multiply 1 by 2 and then add 2. This means that methane contains 4 atoms of hydrogen. Looking at ethane, we can see that ethane has 2 carbon atoms, so in this case n equals 2. To work out the number of hydrogen atoms, we multiply 2 by 2 and then we add 2. This means that ethane contains 6 atoms of hydrogen. Now it's really important that you learn the general formula for alkanes. You could be asked to use it in your exam. Here's a sample question. Propane is an alkane with three carbon atoms. Draw the structure of propane. To answer this question, you'll need to use the general formula to work out the number of hydrogen atoms. Pause the video now and try this yourself. Okay, so propane has three carbon atoms, so n equals three. To work out the number of hydrogen atoms, we need to multiply the number of carbon atoms by two and then add two. Multiplying 3 by 2 gives us 6. Adding 2 now gives us 8 hydrogen atoms. And I'm showing you the structure of propane here. Try this question. Butane is an alkane with 4 carbon atoms. Draw the structure of butane. Again, pause the video and try this yourself. Okay, butane has 4 carbon atoms, so n equals 4. To calculate the number of hydrogen atoms, we multiply 4 by 2 and then add 2. This means that butane has 10 hydrogen atoms, and I'm showing you the structure of butane here. Now scientists say that alkanes are saturated molecules. That's because the carbon atoms are fully bonded to hydrogen atoms. I should point out that you need to memorize the structures of methane, ethane, propane and butane, as you could be asked them in your exam. Remember you'll find plenty of questions on hydrocarbons in my revision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.